YouTube, how's it going? Frog Angels back, and we have our second NBA mock draft for the upcoming 2018 draft. Can't wait for that. I uh, thought we would get at least one more in. We got uh, updated, updated mock, obviously, big risers, some fallers. Uh, some guys staying in the same spot, so we'll go over it in a second. Before that, we do have a subscriber goal of 10,000, so please help us get there. If you already subscribed to the channel, thank you very much. Thanks for sticking with us. We're going to continue to bring you all kinds of sports content daily. So let's get into the first picks here of my mock draft for the NBA draft. First 10 picks. I still have DeAndre Ayton, the center from Arizona, going to the Suns. Uh, I think he's the best player in the draft, and I've talked about before. You don't really see that many athletic centers like Ayton in, in any draft, really. So, And there's really a shortage on centers in the NBA, if you notice. Over the last few years, a lot, a lot of the old school centers not really working out in the league because it's a different league now, a lot more offense. So you're looking for the athletic offensive center. Not too many of them. DeAndre Ayton can be one of them. It can be a great one. So I think it's a no-brainer there. Uh, obviously, I expect a bunch of trades. I'm not trying to predict trades. They're very hard to predict for the NBA. Uh, number two overall, Kings, Luka Doncic. Uh, the guard from Slovenia, I I had this before, did it again. Some people think he may slide a little bit. You never know what the Kings are going to do, so that's basically why. But you expect him to go one or two, so I had to keep him at two just just because it's a, this, is, this is a solid chance he can go one, even though I still have eight in there. Uh, at three, I went with Mo Bamba, the center from Texas. I'm hearing a lot of teams really like his character. They really like him. Uh, and back to the center thing. You don't see see that many centers, athletic centers, that, that could work out in today's NBA. Uh, I think he can, just like Aiton. Obviously, Aiton's a little better. but So the Hawks uh, could use a center of the future. So they go at Bamba here at three. At four, I got Marvin Bagley the third, the power forward from Duke. Obviously, his stats lit up the stat sheet, really, for Duke. A lot of points for a big man. Um, can he bring that to the next level? We will see, but I think the Grizzlies can't pass on that. Pair him with Gasol and then Conley. Hopefully those two guys stay healthy and you get a guy like Bagley in there. They can be back to maybe a playoff team. Obviously they won't be able to contend. Uh, that's just how the NBA is, unfortunately, but they could be a solid team if everyone's healthy and get a guy that – I think Bagley, Bagley is a guy that can play right now. Um, so there's some other guys that have a lot more upside than him but they need to be developed a little more. I think Bagley can play right now. So I think four is more of his range. This next guy I talked about before uh, I like a lot, Jaron Jackson from Michigan State. I have him going to the Mavs. Uh, he's just a guy I mean, he's similar to Bagley, but I, I really like Jaron Jackson. I really like him. I think he plays center even though he's projected to play power four. Maybe he needs to get a little size, uh, but has the length, can block shots. He really can do everything. He, he's really so explosive, so athletic, can block shots, can hit the three. That center three of his is pretty deadly. He has great post moves. There's really nothing. The only thing is maybe he got into foul trouble, so that's why he couldn't play too many minutes. That's why if you look at Bagley versus Jaron Jackson's stats, um, Bagley's got him beat, but it's because Jaron Jackson couldn't play the minutes because he kept getting fouled. So if he can fix that, uh, I th he's going to be a good one. He just has it. I, I really can't explain what it is, but to me, he just has it. He's after Aiton, he's probably my favorite player in the draft after Aiton, but Aiton's an obvious one. Um, Magic at six go Trey Young. Yes, I moved him up. Sounds like he's moving up boards. Is that smoke? There's usually not as much smoke in the NBA. Uh, as there is to the NFL draft, but it could be. Trey Young is a risky prospect because maybe the turnovers, maybe being undersized. I'm not really worried about the undersized thing. You know, sim similar to Steph Curry. Maybe Steph Curry's a little taller, but um, on that, it's it's not going to bother me if he's athletic. He's very athletic. He can play the game. He can shoot the ball. So I'm not really too worried about it. This may be a little early for risks, though, because the turnovers are a little scary. Uh, the Magic do need the point guard. They're trying to find their point guard of the future. Moved on from Alfred Payton. Moved on from Oladipo. That wasn't a good move. But, um, yeah, Magic Magic need to figure it out here. They'll get the point guard. I would probably go in a different direction, honestly, because there's some other really good guys left. I would go with this next guy who the, I have the Bulls taking, Michael Porter Jr., small forward from Missouri. A year ago, people were pretty much locking him in at the first pick didn't really play at all uh, Missouri because of an injury when he did it wasn't really too good but it's very hard just to step in there and play like that kind of messes the whole team chemistry off too so um i i have a feeling he's going to end up in the bulls the bulls very well, very they could trade up easily could trade up and end up with him i think they're going to end up with him it's just 
it's just a feeling I got. I think he's going to be a Chicago Bull. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know why. I mean, he's having his pro day in Chicago. He's, he's spotted at Bull, at Bulls games. He's a Bulls fan apparently, but it's really not just that. It's just, it's just I got a feeling. I, they probably will trade up. They do have two first round picks, so they could do it. Uh, they could use a small forward in the center. There's something going around that they're not really sure about Chris Dunn. They may be looking for a point guard. I don't know if I'm buying that. I think Chris Dunn's the real deal. Just needs some more time to develop. Hopefully he doesn't get injured again. But I think he was okay health-wise. I think uh, the Bulls were just tanking. At 8, Cavs. Colin Sexton, point guard, Alabama. I view him on the Cavaliers, so I kept this pick. Uh, I think he can really score, obviously. Uh, really exciting player to watch. I would like him with LeBron, but I do think LeBron is leaving. If you watched our NFL free agency videos, those were pretty fun. We will be doing those for the NBA. Each player, we're going to pre- be predicting the landing spots, so stay tuned for that. Um, obviously, the draft's first before free agency in the NBA. Don't know if I agree with that, but uh, that's how it is. So uh, we'll eventually get there. Should be fun. The Knicks, w- Wendell Carter. Wendell Carter, the center from Duke. He could go higher. I had him at the Bulls before. Uh, the Bulls are also looking for a center. Uh, the Knicks need other positions more. I think it's just too good to pass here. Could be Mikael Bridges from Nova. But I think Carter being another one of those centers that you don't really see a whole lot. Uh, I think Aiton and Bamba are a little more athletic, but a little more freakish, I should say. So that's why Carter's down here at 9. They're way up there. But these centers, you they're almost I, I said this before, they're almost like quarterbacks in the NFL. Even though I wouldn't compare the positions, obviously, I think the point guard is more like the quarterback, but you don't see a lot of good ones, and when you have the chance to get a one one that has a chance to be good, I think you have to take them. That's just that's just my opinion. So that that's what I mean by that. I went over that last mock draft too, so I, I feel strongly about that. So three centers off the board by nine, I think makes sense to me in this draft class. Don't see it a lot. Uh, 10, Mikael Bridges. Uh, I don't know if he should get by this point. He's very good. I think he's very underrated. People talk about the elite guys. Really, those first nine guys, maybe eight, seven or eight of them, people talk about elite. They talk about nonstop. Every time you hear about the NBA draft, you hear about those guys. Mainly, maybe five guys you hear about a lot. You don't hear about Mikael Bridges. The guy can play. He really has. He was Nova's best player, in my opinion. Like college level, he can make a different argument. Maybe Brunson, someone of DiVincenzo. But Bridges for the NBA coming from Nova. Uh, I think he plays shooting guard. I think he plays small forward. He brings every part of the game. He can rebound for for a guard slash forward. He can block for a guard slash guard slash forward. Good, good uh, wingspan. Good size wingspan. Freakish athlete. I think he's gonna be a good NBA player. I like him a lot, especially at ten. That's a steal. So uh, and then they could lose Redick too. So he can play the two guard. Uh, he can shoot the ball pretty well. Obviously not Redick, but he can shoot the ball pretty well. Could develop it better. On to the next ten picks. The Hornets, Miles Bridges, the forward from Michigan State. Another guy being, both Bridges guys being slept on. Uh, very good player at this time last year, was projected to go higher. Um, so he's probably going to go on this range because of the other talent, but somebody's going to get a good pick, so I have the Hornets picking him up. Uh, I have the, Clipper, or the Clippers with two picks. They get Shea Alexander, the point guard from Kentucky. I mentioned this last time. He could honestly be the first point guard off the board because he's 6'6". Six, six. Um, you don't really see those size point guards every day, and they're pretty good when they're th- as athletic as he is. So he could really be the first point guard off the board, and I would understand. So if he if he makes it to here, uh, I don't think he would get by this point because the Clippers do need a point guard of the future. And I also take Kevin Knox. I think this should be the Kevin Knox's range, but uh, from what I'm hearing, this should be the latest he'll go for in terms of his value. But maybe I, maybe it's a guy that I'm not as high on as everyone else, but he is good. Uh, the Nuggets go Robert Williams. Uh, it's kind of a tricky spot. This is where it kind of drops off a little bit. Robert Williams is pretty pretty darn good, but was more of a center at a and I don't know if he has the height to be a center in the NBA. He does have the strength, though, so we'll see. Uh, the Wizards go Lonnie Walker, another guard. I mean, that's really not their problem for the Wizards. They're, they got two guards, Wall and Beal, obviously. They need other help, uh, mainly at, the, at center or power forward, but really nothing here worthy of the pick. Lonnie Walker, I'm hearing, is rising up boards big time. People like him better at the NBA level than in college. So maybe too good to pass at this point. Uh, maybe a trade up for a big man for the Wizards. Or if they're in a situation, they can trade back. Somebody really wants Lonnie Walker, they can come up and get him. Um, I'm hearing the Suns could trade up. But they have pick 16 one after. I'm taking Aaron Holiday. So maybe it look, looks like a reach. But I think Aaron Holiday is a very good point guard. Um, he played very well at UCLA. can really score the ball. Um, brothers of 
the Holiday brothers in the NBA, Drew and Justin Holiday. So I mean, they I mean, they can play. Um, so I think Aaron Holiday can play as well. So the Suns do need a point guard of the future. Again, there's three off the board by this point. They could trade up to get any of those three. We will see. The Bucks take Zaire Smith, the guard from Texas Tech. Another guy I think will be a better pro than he was in college. Uh, I like him most at shooting guard. Could really shoot the ball at, at uh, a good percentage. So I think the Bucks could use another guy like that. Their Bucks are pretty balanced. Not really sure if they have a huge need. Uh, but they they do need to get better somewhere, so you just get the best player of one of the best players av- available. Spurs Dante Divincenzo, shooting guard from Villanova, uh, one of my favorite players in the draft. Probably everyone everyone's favorite player in the draft, maybe. Uh, I mean, the, another guy that just has it. You know, is he going to be a point guard, shooting guard? You expect him at shooting guard. He can shoot the ball well, high motor. Gotta like the kid. Uh, I can see him fitting in nicely with the Spurs. They can use his talents. Uh, the Hawks go Troy Brown, guard from Oregon. Uh, I like him at shooting guard, can play point guard, but I think we'll play shooting guard, really can play uh, all around there, can really shoot the three, can drive, very athletic. Uh, the Hawks can use a guy like that. Hawks can do some damage in this draft. They have a good amount of picks. They can get better. T-Wolves could be looking for a point guard, but at this point they get another big man. They go to center, Mitchell Robinson, uh, Western Kentucky. Did not actually play for Western Kentucky. The last time play was in high school. Uh, he enrolled at Western Kentucky, dropped out, preparing for the NBA draft. So he must have got some good feedback. Uh, another one of those centers, pretty darn athletic center. So, I mean, he should go by this point. T-Wolves, maybe not their biggest need, but they could use another big man, man with Cat. So uh, here you go. On to the last 10 picks for my NBA mock drafts. 21, Ohio State's forward, Kata, Bates, Diop. Small forward slash power forward could play either one. Could shoot the ball too, so good pick there for the Jazz. Uh, the Bulls go Amari Spellman, power forward slash center from no- another Nova guy, uh, a guy that played more center, but uh, does he have the height to play center on the next level? The Bulls do need a center. I had them taking a small forward with their with their first pick, so uh, they they get a big man here. He'll help them either way. Um, so yeah, I got the Bulls going with Michael Porter and Spellman. 23, the Pacers go Chandler Hutchison, guard slash forward, Boise State. This is probably the latest I think he'll go. He could go earlier. Uh, can really shoot the ball. Again, can play either the two or the three, so good pick there. Uh, Blazers go Jacob Evans, small forward from Cincinnati. I'll pair him with McCollum and Damian Lillard. 25, the Lakers go Kyrie Thomas, the guard from Creighton. I like Thomas a lot. He can really shoot the ball consistently, uh, not being talked about enough. Probably should go earlier in this, but this is probably his range. Uh, not sure what the Lakers are do. will do. This is a tough one, trying to figure out what they'll do. They could use a big man. They do have quite a bit of guards, but do they have any legit ones besides uh, what they plan Lonzo Ball to be? So, I mean, Thomas can really shoot the ball. I think the Lakers will like that. Maybe too good to pass at this point is pretty much what I did here, but it, they could be looking for a big man. But as you can see, the next picks, all the rest of the picks are pretty much guards. So that's, that's the best of the best at this point of the draft. Uh, 26, Jalen Brunson, point guard Nova. Goes to the Sixers. This is just in case Fultz doesn't work out. I mean, he'll get some action, obviously, too, though. Um, 27, Celtics go Gary Trent Jr., shooting guard from Duke. Uh, another Duke player, pretty solid. Celtics could use his shooting, maybe a Marcus Smart replacement if he decides to go elsewhere. Another Duke player to the Warriors, Grayson Allen, guard slash four, can play the two, can play the three. Um, question is him for him is, will he be... As good of an NBA player than he was in college. Some people view him, view him maybe more as a college guy. Well, it would be just something else. He went to the Warriors. Makes sense to me. He would end up being good. Good time to develop him. A lot of time to develop him, really. Unless somehow KD or Clay don't get an extension. We will see. But they can wait a year for the Clay extension. So that's the good thing. Uh, the Nets go Kevin Herter, guard slash four from Maryland. I think probably too good to pass at this point. I'm hearing he can go out a lot higher than this, actually. I just don't know if I see it. So, But at this point at 29, couldn't let him pass here. Uh, Nets could use a big man, but, again, nothing really going here. with the All the good big men are going to be gone by this point because there's a shortage on them in the draft and in the league. So Nets may have to trade up, but they'll still get a solid player down here. And then... The Hawks at 30 go Anthony Simmons, point guard from IMG Academy. That is a high school. Did not go to college. Did not play in college. Uh, took a year off. So apparently you don't have to play in college. You just have to take a year off. Kind of weird. Um, don't really get the purpose. I thought the purpose of 
making them go to college for at least a year is to have them go to college for a year. So it really doesn't make any sense. But he looks legit. I think he could be a good point guard. Uh, just didn't really see see much of him, so I guess that's why he's in a drop. But the Hawks obviously have Schroeder, but this is could be future plans in case doesn't have that in case that doesn't work out. So Anthony Simmons could be a solid pick down here. Could end, eventually go or could end up going higher in this because he does have a lot of upside. Looks legit, but didn't really play the competition that you, that you would like. But a lot of these NBA teams, I think most of them like really go off the high school tape. I mean, same thing with uh, Mitchell Robinson. Didn't he enrolled at Western Kentucky? Didn't play there. Michael Porter played about two games in Missouri. You cannot go off that because he didn't play well for Missouri. But it's un- you can understand why he has a legit excuse. So you really have to go off high school. So um, which teams go off that? We will find out in this draft. Maybe more than others in the past year. Um, we will see. It's going to be very interesting. The one thing I hate about, I love any kind of drafts. I love the NFL draft more than anything, but NBA's next. Can't wait for it. But one thing I hate is, is when the trades, like how does the NFL have that down? The NBA does not. The NFL, Roger Goodell announces it. Well, we know, we know who's already traded before Roger Goodell announces it, but then the right team picks the right player. This for the NBA, we have the wrong team picking the player. They put on the hat and they get traded. I, I still understand. How can they not figure that out? What's the reason for it? I, I can't wait for the NBA draft. I love the draft, but something that drives me nuts. Are they going to fix that ever? Just a random rant I just went on. But that'll do it. Thanks for watching. We have plenty of other sports content on the channel. A lot of NFL stuff on the channel. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Our goal is 10K subscribers. Long way to go, but we know we can get there with your help. Thanks to everybody for everyone's support and for watching. That'll do it. Goodbye.